we had had equivalent height of 1 with respect to 2 as rho 1 by rho 2 into h1. So, h1 is the height of the column of fluid rho 1. If we have n liquids, we have n with respect to 2 as rho n by rho 2 into h n. So, if we have something of this format, this is rho 1, this is rho 2, this is rho 3, this is rho 4, this is rho 5, something of this format, this is 1, this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, with respect to 6, this equivalent height will be rho 1 by rho 6 into h1. This height will be rho 2 by rho 6 into h2 and so on. For the fifth fluid, it will be rho 5 by rho 6 to h5. And finally, for this height, we will just have h6 because rho 6 by rho 6 is going to be 1. So, this completes our problem. However, one more thing which needs to be told here, what is actually converted through this uh, two columns of liquid, we have no change in kinetic energy from this top till here. What is actually getting interconverted is the pressure energy and the potential energy of the fluid. Here, we have certain potential energy of the fluid that decreases and the pressure energy increases due to this height column of fluid rho 1. Here, we have pressure as PATM plus no other pressure. Here, we have pressure as PATM plus rho 1 GH1. But we have potential energy here as rho 1 GH1 if the reference is here and here the potential energy thus is 0. So, the potential energy gets converted to the pressure energy at this point. Although, because this condition is holding, there is no significant change in kinetic energy between these two points. Let us look at, look at another problem. We have a container of this sort. We draw a small container. We don't need a big one. So, we have this small orifice here. It is filled up to this height by some liquid. Let us say that liquid has the density of rho. This height is say capital H this small height is say small h liquid ejects out with velocity V e flux or V e this comes out and falls on this ground, let us say this is the ground, this is the ground, this distance is say d, the orifice has an area of cross section as a0 or ao which is very very less than as, this is as. What we are supposed to find is T and the force on the container due to the effluxing fluid. Solving the first part of the question, what we actually need is velocity of efflux. 
Once we get this, we can apply our basic kinematic equations to find the time it takes to come from this height to this height and use that time to find this distance because we already know V flux by that time. So, from our previous discussions, what we found that if this holds, our Torricelli's law is valid and thus the fluid falls freely through this height of small h. So, velocity of E flux is going to be root 2 g small h. The time taken to hit the ground is going to be equal to, I am stating it directly first, then we will see how, this. This comes from the fact that we have x is equal to ut plus half gt square, considering that the downward direction is positive. We don't have an initial velocity here. I mean, I'm considering just at a point here, just inside, and velocity of efflux is here. So this goes to zero. The x that is covered is basically capital H minus small h, which is this height. So this is going to be h minus small h. This is equal to half g into t square. This gives us the time t as this. We have the time, we have the velocity. So, the distance d is going to be velocity of e flux into the time taken. The result that we get is this. A very good way of checking whether your answer is correct or not is by analyzing your answer dimensionally. What is the dimension of this? This should have the dimension of distance or the dimension of length. The dimension of h is length. The dimension of h minus h is also length. So we have length square under this uh, under root sign. Length square taken under root gives us length. So this is correct. Now let us look at the second part of the question. 